I love 3D printing. I have a bunch of different printers and I've made all sorts of things over the years. Today what I want to show you how to do is use a Raspberry Pi and OctoPrint to be able to remotely control your printer. Also set it up using a webcam or Pi cam so you can monitor your prints and make really cool looking time lapses. And then on top of that, I want to show you how you can use AI to monitor if your print fails and automatically pause it so you don't waste all that filament and time. The first thing that we need to check is that this is going to work with your printer. You need to make sure that your printer has a USB port on it that you can plug into the main board. If you don't have that, then you're not going to be able to hook up the Raspberry Pi to the printer and this isn't going to work. Sorry. The next thing is you're going to need is some hardware. First off, you need a Raspberry Pi. I recommend either the 3B or the 4. Honestly, if you can swing it, I would get the 4 just so that you can future proof it. Also, you're going to need an SD card for your Raspberry Pi. I recommend from 8 to 64 gigabytes. You're also going to need a USB cable to plug in your Raspberry Pi to your printer and a power cable for your Raspberry Pi. Make sure you get one that's powerful enough for the Pi. Also, you're going to need either a USB cam or the Pi cam. I do recommend that you get the Pi cam uh, just because it's $10, it's small, and it can just attach right to the printer. I'll have links down in the description for all this different stuff if you need to pick it up. To get started, come to the download page of Octoprint. That's just octoprint.org forward slash download. And then we're gonna scoot down here and we're gonna download the Raspberry Pi Imager. All right, with the Raspberry Pi Imager, depending on what system you're using, download that. I'm on Windows, so I'm just gonna click download for Windows and that should download and you can just come back to your, the first page so that we have our little instructions. With that imager downloaded, just click it to run it. And then install, and then just run it right away. Okay, now for us, we can follow these instructions. So we're gonna choose our OS. In this case, it's gonna be a specific purpose OS and Octopi and then just choose the latest stable version. Then for your storage with your SD card plugged in, choose that. And now here's the thing that makes this really nice. Hit Control Shift X, and you're gonna come up with some extra little configuration. Make sure you do enable SSH, put in a nice password for your Pi user. And then also we can configure our Wi-Fi right away. So put in your SSID. Change your country to whatever country you are. I'm US based. Now I'm gonna set this, that's actually my time zone and everything. And then if you already know how to do all this stuff, you can skip it, but we're gonna run the wizard once it's all set up. So hit save. And then you can hit right. Yes. And then this takes a little while. All right, there we are. Now that you have Octopi installed on the SD card, you wanna take that card and put it into your Raspberry Pi. Plug in your power cable into the wall and then into the Raspberry Pi. This will boot it up and then we can log on to the Raspberry Pi. To access it, you can go to octopi.local. If this doesn't work for you, you may need to put in your actual IP address where it's at. You can find that in your router settings, but octopi.local should work for most people. All right, so we're taken to the setup wizard. We can just click next. We don't have a backup. This is a brand new, so let's move on. Access control, you're gonna wanna type in a username and some sort of password. That way you can set this up, create an account so you can't get out. This is mandatory, so you do need to set up and create this account. Now we need to uh, configure the connectivity check. Uh, we need to do this. I like to just leave the normal settings. Basically, it's just going to check every 15 minutes to see that if you have a working internet connection. Uh, you can disable or enable anonymous usage tracking. Uh, this is also mandatory. 
Then you have the blacklist. I'm going to enable the plugin blacklist. This just stops any plugins that are known to have issues or be malicious from you installing. And then I'm gonna set up a default printer profile. We'll need this later for the uh, time lapses. So for the width of my printer, it's 220. Just put in whatever your printer is. Uh, I never touch this stuff. And then this, I'm using a 0.4 and I only have one extruder. So just set that stuff up for the default printer. Um, you can change any of that stuff if you need to. And then you can just hit finish and we're done with that setup. Now here we are in the OctoPrint. Uh, this is the normal main page. You can see there's a bunch of different tabs over here that we can look at different things in the printer. We have our connection, the status of the printer, and then also the files uh, and some notifications. You can add all sorts of different things on here, but I'm just gonna go through real quick the basic stuff. In this case, I actually have had always good luck just hitting auto and hitting connect. I like to save my settings and then auto connect on startup. So I'll just hit connect and it should detect pretty quick and hook up to the printer. This has worked from even really old printers like the ANET A8. So I've never had this not work. You may have to go play around with your baud rate and serial. Then you can see the state of your printer. We are operational. Over here now, we're gonna start to get some temperature information. Down here in files, you can upload your sliced files. Let's see if I've got anything. All right, I've got, looks like I've got some low poly Pikachu. So I can upload that up. So now this is on the Pi. So you can see uh, this is small enough. It didn't actually change any of my file size. It's a pretty small file. But now if I wanted, I could load this up, which means it's loaded, not printing yet. And then if I come over into G code viewer, I can see the G code of it. So you can scroll through each of the layers and on any individual layer, you can look through and see what it's gonna be doing. So I think that's pretty cool. Honestly though, I never use that. <laughs> uh, if you wanna hit print, it'll just start printing. You can also come set up your temperatures. You can come and say, I'm gonna do PLA and this will start heating up your bed and get your printer warming up. I'm not gonna do a print right now. Control, you can move your printer around. Here's the X and Y, here's the Z, and here's what you set it in how many millimeters you want it to go. You can extrude some filament if you need to. If you have a webcam set up, we'll do this later. You should see it here. You also have the terminal. So here you can send commands to your printer. And then time lapses, you need the printer hooked up to be able to do that. And we're gonna use something a little bit better than the default time lapse. So if you don't have a webcam, this is it. In order to set up the rest of the things that we wanna do, you're gonna need a camera plugged into the Raspberry Pi. Make sure that the Pi is booted off first before you plug in a camera. If you have a USB webcam, you can just plug that in and it should work with the Raspberry Pi. I recommend hooking up uh, a Pi cam they're cheap, super light, and you can do some cool stuff with them. They come with a little ribbon cable that you hook on to the camera and then hook into the clips on the Pi, and then you'll be able to monitor with this little camera. I'm also gonna 3D print a little case for the Pi cam, just to give it a little bit more strength. And I'm actually gonna use hot glue to attach it to my 3D printer. I like hot glue just in that it's not permanent and it's nice and easy to kind of get things just how I want it. There's all sorts of different things if you look on like Thingiverse so that you can make it adjustable um, and to hold your camera and your Pi and all sorts of stuff. So check that out. Um, but in my case, I'm just gonna do a super simple case that I can hot glue to my printer. To really get the best looking time lapses, we're gonna need to install a plugin called Octolapse. If you come into the settings, you can come down to Plugin Manager, and we're gonna get some more. Type in Octolapse, and then Install. So after that finishes up, it's all installed, and we just need to click Restart Now. And then yeah.
So with everything loaded back up, you can see we have a new tab that's called Octolabs. Now, one thing to make sure everything works right, come into control, make sure that your webcam, you can see something. If not, you're gonna need to troubleshoot what's wrong with it. But so far for me, everything's worked pretty much just fine, either with a webcam or the Pi cam. So come over into Octolabs and we're gonna need to set this up. So for the printer, we're gonna need to add a new one. In my case, I have the milled and printed 3D printer. I'm gonna import the ANET A8. All right, and now we should be good. If you're using Scura, you're gonna need to follow this guide um, to make sure that it's gonna get all your configuration settings. And then if you're doing slicer, then you're gonna need to follow this guide. So it really depends on your different slicers. I'm not gonna go into those because it's really gonna depend on what you're doing. But we can just hit save. Make sure you follow the guides though, depending on your slicer. Hit save, and then we're good for the printer. Now, what we wanna do is we need to choose the stabilization. So this is where do you want the print bed to go when it takes the picture? For my case, I want it in the front, and then I want my uh, print head to move to the left. So the print bed is gonna come out, move the head off to the side, and then it's gonna take the photo for us. So this is how you get really nice, clean looking, consistent layer by layer time lapses. For the trigger, I'm just gonna do every layer. You can play with this depending on how you want it. Um, the timer is really good if you're doing like a continuous spiral print. Um, personally, I'm a big fan of every layer, but again, you can play with these how you want. I really think every layer is kind of the best. Now you're gonna do a rendering for what you're looking for. Um, so you can choose 30 frames a second, 60, fixed lengths, things like that. You can also come into the settings and make a different one. Most of my videos are in 24 frames per second. So I'm actually just gonna make this up real quick. So we're gonna come down and basically I'm just gonna change this to 24. It's gonna add a couple of seconds at the beginning and the end. I'm just gonna leave this bit right here for right now. You can play with this to have better quality and I'm gonna hit save. That way I have my 24 frames a second which merges better with my YouTube videos. If you have multiple cameras plugged in, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you this, you can also plug in um, a different webcam, like the USB and the Pi cam. And then you can choose which camera you want to do these time lapses for. And then you should be good to go. If you wanna test this, you can turn on test mode. Then you can do your print and it won't actually print, but you'll be able to see that everything's working. But I just recommend printing something that isn't super important, but you should be good to go now. Now, when you take a print, you're gonna be able to get some really cool plugins. If you don't want to do that, because it does take a little bit longer, you can disable it. Um, but yeah, that's it for Octolaps. Let's do some cool little time lapses. The Pikachu turned out really good. I'm happy with the print, but honestly, the time-lapse focus was a little bit out of focus, so we need to adjust that. I unhooked the camera here, the Pi cam, and I printed off this little wrench so I can adjust the focus on it. You just put that on there and turn it, and then you're able to adjust where it's focused at. And in this case, I need it focused pretty close. It looks like my focus is further away. So you may have that issue. A lot of the Pi cams come with a little focus turner. I think you can buy one from Adafruit for like 95 cents, but I didn't have one or I lost mine. And so I just printed off this little wrench. So I'm gonna adjust that and then do another time lapse.
Now that we have Octolapse all set up and our time lapses are looking nice, so we know the camera is working well, I want to hook up Spaghetti Detector or use the Spaghetti Detector plugin so we can monitor if there's errors and automatically pause your prints. This is totally optional, but for me, this really helps save me filament and wasted materials. And I think that matters. 3D printing, while it's not the most expensive hobby, I could be buying Ferraris. Uh, it does cost in filament, especially if you're using more exotic filaments. So I think the spaghetti detector is a well worth plug-in. To set up the spaghetti detective, we're gonna come back in here to our plugin manager, get more, and type in spaghetti. Click install, and we just wait for that to install. After that's done, you're going to need to go through all the steps, restart your Pi, and wait for that to restart back up. The first time that you reload after you've installed the Spaghetti Detective, you'll get this nice setup wizard. So just click on Setup Plugin. In my case, I'm going to do the web setup. You can do the mobile setup if you have that. It's no problem. So I'll continue with that. So we're going to click here to open the website in a separate tab. Now you need to sign up. You can use your email address or you can just use Google or Facebook. I've actually already set this up before, so I'm going to sign in with Google+. So now with this page, we're going to link our printer. So just click this. Next, it should find on your local network the Raspberry Pi that has it uh, running. Click link. And then you can say link now. And then you get to name your printer. And then go check out the printer feed. So here I've got it operational. I don't have a print actually going, so the detective isn't watching. Now you can have this plugged in. You can tell it to stop watching for failures if you want. Or you can even have it watch for failures but then not actually stop in case you detect failures. So you can turn this on and off depending on what you want. What's also cool about this is it saves the time lapses for you. So I have various time lapses. Um, I've been using this for a while and it's really cool. These time lapses are gonna be every 10 seconds. So they're gonna look a little bit different than your Octolapse time lapses, even though it's the same camera taking it, which I think is pretty cool. So there you have it, the Spaghetti Detective is installed. I hope that this was useful for you and that you were able to get Octopi set up on your printer. Let me know down in the comments if there's other things that you've set up with Octoprint that you really like and feel are essential for this software. There's tons of different plugins and it'd be great to kind of let people know what stuff has worked for you. Also, if you're Sterling and you're watching this, I made this video for you and you better get this set up. Thanks so much for watching and take care. Color check, color check, oh yeah, color check, color check, color check, yum, yum, yum.